To know the different types of container ships, let's first dive into its history, which began in 1955 when the ship Clifford J. Rogers was launched. Its inaugural operation involved the ferrying of around 600 cargo containers from British Columbia to Skagway. The world's first purpose-built container ship measured slightly over 102 meters lengthwise with a breadth of over 14 meters and a height of over 7 meters, with GRT of around 4,000 tons. After almost six decades, the container shipping industry now carries about 60% of the value of goods shipped via sea and it is predicted that in the next decade, 90% of the general global cargo will be shipped in containers. Container ships are considered to be the fastest mode of shipping transport and can reach speed to an average of 20 to 25 knots. However, many shipping lines are opting for slow steaming to cope up with rising bunker fuel prices and overcapacity. There are many types of container ships which can be classified on the basis of generation, size of the container ship, handling modes of the ship, service range. Types of container ships in terms of size and generation. First generation. As mentioned earlier, the first generation of container ship came into existence in 1955 when the world's first purpose-built container ship was launched. The first generation of container ship traded between 1955 to 1970 and had a carrying capacity of 500 to 800 TEUs or 20-foot equivalent units. Mostly tanker ships and bulk cargo ships were modified to carry containers during that time. Second generation cellular ships. The second generation of the container ships came into picture during 1970 to 1980 when cellular container ships were made in shipyards to exclusively carry container cargo. The capacity of these ships was in between 1,000 to 2,500 TEU and the ship's length can go up to 215 meter. MV Koringa was the world's first fully cellular purpose-built container ship. Third generation or Panamax ships. These ships were introduced during the 1980s as the growing economies rapidly pushed need of larger container ship to lower the operating costs per TUU. The Panamax ships were made keeping in mind that they can cross the Panama Canal with a capacity of 4,000 TEUs. This generation vessel dominated the container trade between 1980 to 1988. The length of these vessels was between 250 to 290 meters. Fourth generation or post Panamax ships. The new size and capacity of vessels which were introduced in 1988, known as post Panamax, had 4,500 TEU capacity and a width of 32.2 meters, which was the width limit requirement of Panama Canal at that time. The length of these ships was between 275 to 305 meters. APL C-10 container ship class ships were the first post-Panamax vessels. Fifth generation or post-Panamax Plus. In 1996, post-Panamax Plus vessel with a container capacity of 6,500 TEU was introduced, which were not long but wider to be more efficient. As time passed, container ships with 8,000 TEU mark started sailing at sea with deeper drafts and having a length of approximately 335 meters. Sixth generation Seuss Max ships or very large container ships. From the year 2006, a drastic change was witnessed in the container ship construction and very large container ships were introduced with a capacity of 11,000 to 14,000 TEUs and a length of approximately 400 meters, which were able to pass the Suez Canal. 
Emma Mersk is one of the most famous VLCS which came into fame because of its length and TEU in 2006. New Panamax ships. In 2016, as the new extended Panama Canal was inaugurated, container ships with a carrying capacity of 12,500 TEU were introduced to cross the new canal with a length of up to 366 meters. Post Swiss Max or ultra large container ships. A further extension of the Swiss Max design led to the introduction of ultra large container ship class of 18,000 to 21,000 TEUs and above in 2013. These ships are 400 meter long and affected by the size restrictions of the Swiss Canal. The Triple E class ships by Musk were the first to breach this mark. Malika Max These are ships designed which are not yet built but on paper. They can go up to the length of 500 meter which will become the longest ship in the world with a capacity of 25000 TEUs. Container ship types on the basis of cargo handling. Conro ships Conro stands for container roll on roll off vessels. These ships can carry a combination of containers and vehicular cargo. The containers are mostly stored on deck and the transport rolling cargo will be loaded in their ship's belly or hold. Their twin decks can be hoisted or lowered to adjust deck heights to suit the cargo whether cars or other heavy vehicles. Lolo ships. Lolo stands for lift on lift off ships which are provided with cranes to lift the cargo for loading or unloading. Both 20 foot containers and 40 foot containers can be shipped on board these Lolo vessels. For the cargo which cannot be fitted inside the containers, it can be lifted, placed and secured directly on its deck or hold. Good amount of space are made available on the top deck so that it can be altered to fit the needs of the freight that is lifted on for transportation container ships on the basis of service range barges for inland waterways container carrying barges are used to transport the containers into inland waters where feeder vessels cannot transit in this type of intermodal transport the barge carries 100 to 300 containers depending upon the size of the barge the barge can be self propelled or can be pushed using tugs attached to it feeder vessels these are small capacity ships having a capacity of around 1000 teus as the name suggests these ships are suitable for feeder services It will feed cargo to mother vessels from smaller ports to larger ports or from larger ports to smaller ports where a bigger vessel cannot dock or sail. Mother vessel. The mother vessel is big in size as compared to feeder vessel and is usually bounded for international trades to serve between major big ports. Mother vessels have the capacity to carry thousands of containers and it can vary from 2000 to 21000 TEUs. Mother vessel calls only main ports and covers large distance compared to feeder vessel. Container ships in the range of 5000 to 8000 TEU are considered to be the most flexible in terms of the ports they can access and the market they can service. since using larger ships require fewer port calls however a ulcs will provide better provision to carry a huge amount of cargo for the same distance providing larger savings in fuel and operating costs therefore the limits of economies to scale in container shipping are much more limited by commercial attributes than by technical constraints If you have any questions or suggestions please drop your comments below and we will get back to you at the earliest. 
If you like this video, please subscribe to Marine Insight channel and press the bell icon to get notified when we post such amazing videos. Please like, comment and share this video and do not forget to subscribe.